everyone welcome to another episode of race asia so today i'm going to make kind of like a quasi response video to uh the one that nathan rich made about a fortnight ago where he asked people to fund him so that his videos can break even so i first um knew about nathan from about maybe six months ago when youtube recommended him or um recommended his channel a few of his videos so i kind of uh, went through a few of them and I found it quite entertaining because he's very logical and he presents his facts in a very succinct way and so I like that um, in addition to his kind of dry caustic humor which is something that I appreciate and so I, I watched him on and off so I didn't subscribe until maybe about three months ago and uh, because I was very impressed with uh, no maybe less than that maybe two months ago um, basically after the COVID-19 episode that he did in which he did a very kind of detailed um, uh, trajectory of when the vaping issues in the US arose and then how coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 uh, got tracked in China etc so I thought oh that's very like thorough investigative journalism if I might say, if I might use this in myself so um, after that video I subscribed to him and um, I would say that he, of course, has achieved his fame partly on his particular profile because he's an American guy and he's pro-China. So that is a little bit of an anomaly and enigma, if you will. And um, so I don't berate his, um, his success like because of that factor. That's all fine. Um, I opened my YouTube channel upon the instigation of one of my core readers uh, a Vietnamese Australian guy called Troy and I suppose he noticed that I had been you know banned for the upteenth time edit banned the kind of fortnight sit outs that Cora is want to do um, and so he said why don't I have a YouTube channel and I thought that made sense as well because basically it's just another point of contact so Cora uh, my blog and um, I'm on Medium as well, so please follow me on Medium. And please follow me on Twitter for my daily tirades there. So, um, yeah, so it, it's just like another tool in the arsenal. So that's why I created uh, YouTube. And um, But at that time, when Troy like suggested that I have that, he, he did talk about Nathan. And he said, um, while, of course, he's very happy that there are more uh, work western nationals who have um realized that a pushback definitely needs to be made against the western propaganda machine the murdoch press but he was saying it nevertheless reverberates uh it has reverberations of the white savior complex and you know the white burden um even though they're not pushing their own western ideology but it seems as though our cause needs to be fought by them before it becomes a legitimate cause and so, of course, I realized that as well. But then I thought, um, but to each their own. And if he is genuinely for the cause, like welcoming a brother and sister, like in arms, of course, is better than having another enemy. So that's all fine. But of course, about two weeks ago, I was quite disappointed in uh, what Nathan had to say. And in particular, it's not only asking for money which for me because in previous videos he had expounded that his career was actually he was quite handsomely remunerated in his day job apparently so he's some sort of a computer whiz and he does things for hollywood movies so i i i'm assuming that he's got a few coins saved up he he must have um and so I'm thinking, why does he need his videos to break even? Because what is there behind a Nathan Rich video? It's literally him in front of a camera. So if I wanted to show you my ugly face, I would just switch the camera around and I'd have a Nathan Rich set up. And I can tell you it costs nothing, basically. I mean, I, you could argue that he spends time... Um, but his videos run for like what five six minutes a pop and i suppose you can say he did research before that but if you actually look into what he's saying basically everything is off cgtn uh, south china morning post um and i can say for those of you who do want to understand his points simply go and 
look at the Chinese constitution, which you can get off the net. Uh, take a look at the Sino, uh, the British Sino Joint Declaration and the Basic Law. These things are all accessible, uh, accessible by yourself. Like you can just literally just punch these things in and find these documents. So you don't need to go through Nathan. Okay, so he's not some sort of oracle or like medium. Um, and so his information is not particularly fresh if you do watch these channels. Like I myself, I watch all those on top of Democracy Now, um, RT, Grey Zone, um, yeah, like like many others, Intercept, um, Vox, like so many others. Um, so if you watch all those, you pretty much know what Nathan knows. And if you read on top of that, you'll know more than what he does. So um, I don't think Nathan has a particular edge. But I do think the fact that he has this white mask is the true value. And what was disappointing about the video that he made two weeks ago was basically he... He show, for me, because I listened to what he said, and just reading the comments that his viewers have left behind, I'm flummoxed, honestly. I'm flummoxed that nobody has called him out on this. Because he said if he can't break even on his videos from his sponsorship through Patreon, etc., then he would have to be more amenable to the big corporations who could potentially advertise on his videos. So he said... Um, for example, he has to conform more to their kind of political persuasion than how he truly feels. Now, like I said before, you honestly, if you take a look at um, a video that does require a lot of time and a lot of, I don't know, choreography, CG behind it, I can understand you wanting to build your audience but he is akin to Shameless Maya. I don't know if people know about Shameless Maya. She's another one that did this, right? She gave herself one year to promote herself on every social media platform. And then she started to get this kind of weird-ass fancy production team that wasn't needed. And then she started getting aggro that people weren't paying for her. But nobody requested that. Like, literally, everybody who opens their own social media account... We don't do it upon the instigation of a whole fan line request. We are not like, for example, Tay Swift, who has a legion of fans saying, oh, why don't you do YouTube as well? Like even Will Smith started the YouTube on his own, not upon his fans instigation. So it kind of blows my mind how these kind of nobodies, and I include myself in this category, who achieve a little bit of notoriety sometimes, a little bit of fame, and then get all hoity-toity and say, start demanding people, like, remunerate them, like, for something that they wanted to do themselves, okay? But, like I said, the dis most disappointing thing was, if you calculate what it takes to create a Nathan Rich video, literally a dude sitting in front of a camera, reading, like, an internet document that he's downloaded, and honestly that's literally what a few bucks so he's willing to sell out his sense of righteousness his sense of integrity for literally a few bucks and he attests this because he literally said he his message has to fit more with big corporations if we don't give him money so i don't know how because obviously the people who go to his channel besides the trolls which i get um even my tiny channel at this stage and especially on my Quora uh, writings I get lots of trolls there but um yeah most of them are his followers because they genuinely resonate with what he says and how he feels and so I'm surprised nobody said what you're gonna sell out your vision passion your your um sense of integrity for literally a few bucks instead you see comment after comment saying come on everybody let's pitch in let's buy him a coffee let's give him a few bucks um and, and oh that's background noise that's not me farting and so I, i've even seen a comment that says he's more chinese than a chinese person 
Okay, come on, that's a whole lot of cow pat there. No, he's not more Chinese than the Chinese. Do you know why? Because if he was an alpha woke Chinese person, he would do it for free. He wouldn't ask for financial compensation for his internal belief. He wouldn't ask to be compensated to right a wrong. And so, like I said, the need to have a white face on a colored cause is just too strong in the Asian community and you see it it's emphasized and it's amplified in this particular instance everything that Nathan has ever said is something that we inherently already know okay but we can't jettison the fact that it's a white face that is saying what is inside our parts and we need that white face because let's face it every one of us can literally and 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 our our conviction is stronger because we feel it firsthand this is not a derivative feeling this is not a second hand feeling this is not something that we needed to explain we felt it firsthand we know how it feels when we were in primary school and somebody pulled the eyes and said, this is what you look like, and this is how you sound. <laughs> okay? So, we know that firsthand, and then we know, after watching Japan almost come to the apex and get tripped down through the Plaza Accord, and now watching China, them sabotaging Huawei at each and every single step. Like, we know how it feels to be legitimately, like... We, we really do have the substance to take the top spot. Yet we can't because now they are playing dirty. Like America is literally paying other countries to not use Huawei. Like I don't even know whether people understand what that means. That's foul play. That is literally playing dirty. And the West has never had a glorious win. They've always used genocide, brute force, open markets only when it was beneficial to them when they could go in and plunder resources but not when they are in a position where others can go in using their free market ideology and take back what they stole so i don't even understand where this point of worship necessitating the need of a white face to represent us why this is so prevalent and so strong why does it have this herculean like hold on to us and so that is one point which makes nathan particularly disappointing is that he could literally be bought for a few bucks okay i'm going to tell people something i am not on the forbes list and i and through his past videos, one of those stupid, dumbass English teachers that come to an Asian country to hustle using their native tongue. Okay? And I would say I'm essentially no different because my day job is appallingly stupid. However, I think I'm smarter than the average idiot that comes here simply because when I was using my body when I was toiling to make my coins, I invested my coins into something that had leverage, investment properties, right? So now I'm nowhere near the retirement age and I'm already semi-retired and I keep working those few days simply because I don't want to be bored out of my brains. My brains, sorry, not brains, I've only got one. Um, I don't have children, so I don't have any responsibilities in that way, the domestic responsibilities. My entrepreneurial husband is jet setting all over the place. So he's not at home in order for me to need to do anything pertaining to his needs. So basically I'm free to go to the gym. Then afterwards I go to cafe where my friends are free. We meet up, I call my family and I write and I read. And I'm trying to get myself into volunteer activities, but it's actually notoriously difficult in Japan. And so 
that's not even being on the Forbes list. That's just me being not greedy. Like I have passive income. My school that I have adheres to my husband's entrepreneurial model because he's the entrepreneurial part of the coupledom and I'm the investment part of the coupledom. And together we have something that works. And I would never ask anybody to give me money. In fact, I've never set up a Patreon account. I've never set up anything. Say you wanted to give me money. You couldn't. I wouldn't accept it. Because I'm not doing this eventually hoping that I'm going to be compensated, which is pretty much what Nathan had intended in the beginning, or else he would not. He, he